and 15 Klansmen raided a Polish wedding. Tell me why you're, you're saying this joke, like, I don't understand. She said it was actually originally a black joke, and she replaced the N-word with Polak because she didn't want to be, quote, prejudiced. They disguised themselves in blackface and set fire to Polish and Lithuanian neighborhoods. Their hope was to draw the immigrant population into a bloody war against the African Americans. Yes, the Poles are white, but they're not white enough, so they're ethnic white. You know, this is kind of where I start having trouble with the terms white and black. The stereotype that the Nazis put out, that the Americans absorbed, was that, quote, Poland has inferior intelligence. Hi, I'm Daniel Romero, and thank you so much for being with me on my channel, where I started exploring my family's hidden heritage from Louisiana. And now I'm digging into this idea of what does it mean to be an American and questions about identity. But before we begin, I have a favor to ask of you. So 92% of my viewers, that's you, are not subscribed to the channel, and I would love to get that number down to 75%. So if you've ever watched a video and enjoyed it, or if you hate me and want to keep tabs on me better, I would love to have you subscribe. It helps the channel more than you know. Now, during the 1920s, Polish communities in the United States were targeted by nativist groups and sympathizers. American nativism countered the immigration and assimilation of Poles into the United States, leading to all kinds of discriminatory attitudes and actions against Polish Americans. One particularly distressing incident involved the Ku Klux Klan. This occurred in Pittsburgh, Illinois, where the Klan had actually infiltrated the local police force. In 1924, S. Glenn Young and 15 Klansmen raided a Polish wedding, violently pushing everyone against the walls, taking all the silver coins, stomping on the wedding cake. Now, shockingly, the Polish couple had actually been afraid of and anticipated something bad happening, so they had reached out to the police chief and the mayor beforehand seeking protection, but unbeknownst to them, both the police chief and the mayor were part of the Klan. Such acts of violence were not isolated incidents. Polish communities across the United States uh, had you know, faced similar hostility in White Deer, Texas, where Poles were among the few ethnic minorities, which we'll get back to that phrase later. Polish children engaged in near daily fights defending themselves against other school children, while Southerners joined in calling them derogatory names like Polacks and darn Catholics. Not only though did physical violence occur, derogatory attitudes were actually expressed through offensive merchandise even up until the 1980s, okay? So in 1980, New York State's highest appellate court ruled in the case of State Division of Human Rights versus McCarris Gift Center which was a gift shop that was allowed to sell um, shirts with, uh, quote, Polak jokes on it, according to the case. While the ruling was only one vote short of actually making it illegal, this underscored the complete lack of legal protection um, against these stereotypes for Polish Americans. Like, this was a real problem. This was a serious problem. Similarly, in 1983, a lawsuit was actually brought to Paramount Pictures, like the movie people, over Polish jokes that were in the movie Flashdance. But this was dismissed by the judge because he claimed the jokes didn't jeopardize Poles' employment and business opportunities. Now, some of these jokes were really bad. And I found that a historian shared this anecdote um, about the root of some of these Polish jokes. So, as an example, a historian heard a student in Detroit tell this joke he writes in his book. Question, how can you tell the difference between a dog and a Polak who have been run over by a car? Answer, for the Polak, there won't be any skid marks. That is to say, the driver of the car will swerve to avoid hitting the dog, but not the Polish immigrant. Now, when he questioned the student who told this joke, and basically was like, "What? tell me why you're, you're saying this joke, like, I don't understand. She said it was actually originally a black joke, and she replaced the N-word with Polak because she didn't want to be, quote, prejudiced. The stereotype that the Nazis put out, that the Americans absorbed, was that, quote, Poland has inferior intelligence, unquote. Now you have to remember that Hitler, when he was coming to power, the first group of Poles that were killed were the educated class. Comes out, the stereotype is supposed to be like, look how stupid the Polish people are. Well, it's like you literally just went through and killed everyone who was in these uh, higher educated classes. They were subjected to derogatory stereotypes with their, quote, expressionless Slavic faces, unquote, and they were, quote, stunted figures, unquote. Their inherent 
ignorance and, quote, propensity to violence, unquote, was also attributed to them. To add insult to injury, Polish workers were given new names by their Anglo-Saxon bosses who couldn't be bothered to learn their actual names, and they would be given ridiculous names like calling people Thomas Jefferson. But the discrimination faced by Polish Americans went far beyond social prejudices. So in 1901, a man named Leon, and I, I don't know how to say his last name, so I'll just put it up on screen. He was a Polish American. He assassinated President William McKinley. The entire Polish community was held responsible for this. They were labeled as potential anarchists. And a Polish-American newspaper was even pressured into apologizing on behalf of the Polish community for the decisions of this one man. However, the story of Polish-Americans took an insane turn in 1919 in Chicago. Irish gangs in Chicago were wearing blackface. So, you know, they're putting on the paint and stuff to try to look like they're African-American. In blackface, they attacked Polish and Lithuanian neighborhoods. These were members of Reagan's cults, one of the leading gangs. They disguised themselves in blackface and set fire to Polish and Lithuanian neighborhoods in the back of the yards area. Their hope was to draw the immigrant population into a bloody war against the African Americans. The goal was to convince the Poles and other Eastern European immigrants that they too were white and they should align themselves in this fight against blacks in Chicago. But Poles, on the other hand, abstained from taking sides, considering the conflict be between these two groups to be um, white and blacks, and they, they didn't really see themselves in either group. Weirdly, the Reagan cults also directed their anger at the Ku Klux Klan. So you would think that these people were like going after African Americans and their white supremacists, but they had a beef with the Klan because the Klan hated Catholics and the Irish were Catholic. And this just becomes this whole muddled mess of of why do we hate this person? Oh, because of this, but we can't align with these people because of this. In 1921, that September, 3,000 people from the Stockyards District of Chicago watched as the Reagan Colts gang hanged an effigy of a white cheated Klansman. And actually by the 20s and 30s, um, this, this gang actually became part of the Chicago outfit under Al Capone. A Chicago in uh, experienced this influx of not only Eastern European immigrants, but this was also the time of the Great Migration, where a lot of African Americans were leaving the South for places up north like Chicago. These groups felt threatened by the arrival of these Black communities, and in order to maintain what they saw as their advantage, they sought to include the Poles into this greater category of white. Now, this strategic move worked over time. Poles did start to become considered white by their fellow Americans. And we've seen similar shifts like we've talked about in here um, for the Italians, the Greeks, the Jews, the Russians, some of the groups that I have yet to get to, but I plan to. Yeah, you know, these groups all had ambivalent racial status here in the U.S. upon arrival, but eventually came to be embraced or embrace a broader white identity. White identity didn't even grant them the same privileges as the other white people. They were referred to as ethnic whites, and found themselves in a vulnerable position, not subject to the hostile discrimination and violence African Americans experienced, but they were also not benefiting from the same privileges that the Western European whites had. And I have to, I really take umbrage with this phrase, ethnic whites or ethnic. It's just ridiculous. Like every group is ethnic, right? Every group is ethnic, but we kind of have started to use this term. Um, I've heard the other term is like spicy white. Um, where it's like, you're mostly white, but like, there's a little, like, little thing that we consider exotic or, um, not Anglo enough to count. So we have to have a qualification on how white they are. Yes, the Poles are white, but they're not white enough. So they're ethnic white. Like they didn't quite fit anywhere. Now the Polish experience here is not unique. And other groups have demonstrated that whiteness is like a malleable category. Well, for me, when I see, I see that it's malleable, it's like, if it can be this or this, it's really nothing, right? It's not a good descriptor of anything if if it, it could change over time. And, you know, this is kind of where I start having trouble with the terms white and black. You know, some people prefer those as self-identifications, and that's good. Like, you do you, like, whatever you feel comfortable with. But for me, I, I feel like these terms are intentionally vague and they strip us of our beautiful diversity and our heritage that we are bringing to the table, regardless of the shade of brown that our skin is. Now, does that mean I don't believe that people have different racial and ethnic backgrounds? No, of course they do. Of course they do. But 
But what I'm talking about is this landscape where things can change over time. And that's just, that's just not how things work, right? And if they are changing over time, they're not, they're not really something to hang your hat on, right? These categories are, are fluid and arbitrary <laughs> and causing division. Quote, we wanted to be American so quickly that we were embarrassed if our parents couldn't speak English. My father was reading a Polish newspaper and somebody was supposed to come into the house. I remember sticking it under something. We were ashamed of being foreign. This, this is probably outside the scope of this video, but I start to wonder about this idea of the hyphenated Americans, you know, where there's the African-American, Italian-American, Mexican-American, Chinese-American, like anything that's going in front. And I, I don't have an answer to this because this is something I'm still working through and I, I would love your thoughts. Should we just be American? is a question that I have. Because, you know, if you've watched my channel from the beginning, value genealogy. And I value ancestry so much. I think it's so important to know your roots and where you come from. But at the same time, by identifying as an ethnic group ahead of all else, if we're always seeing ourselves as American second, then we're always going to see our neighbor as somebody other than. I don't know. I, I, I would love your thoughts on that. Yeah, you know, I don't have a solution to the to the problems that we have as all these different fractious groups here in America, but I do think that talking about it is the first step and having conversations together is the first step towards healing. If you would like to know a little bit more about the research I've done to my family, I'll leave the playlist for the documentary series called Finding Lola that I did when I was researching my mom's grandmother, uh, who was born in Louisiana.